an anthropomorphized tree sexually assaults a wizard in this G-rated cartoon. Jamie? Yeah. Let's go watch The Last Unicorn! Everybody and welcome to another episode of Good Times Great Movies. We are an 80s movie podcast. Or an 80s movies podcast? Is 80. it plural for both? I think it's 80s movies. Yeah, because the 80s is the ownership. It's not plural. It's... Neither of us went to school yeah. for <laughs> English or literature or speaking, really. So anyway, that's, that's yeah, and what the movies you're are plural. To. We do more than one movie, not yeah, at a time. You're, but... you're listening to us talk about movies from the '80s. That's correct. And we have quite a treat today. Ooh. Well, my name is Doug McCambridge, and with me, as always, is Jamie Lorello. Greetings. Uh, I before we start, Jamie, I have a question, uh-huh. and again, I don't want to give away my thoughts on this film, but. This is your birthday choice. Yeah. My birthday choice was RoboCop. <laughs> and I'm just wondering, are you still mad about having to watch RoboCop? <laughs> is that why you chose this, The Last Unicorn? This was my big middle finger to your RoboCop is what this is. This is a big horn in the middle of my forehead middle finger to say Robo Unicorn. Um, I, I can't think of a movie more different than <laughs> RoboCop than this. Even Breakin', I could say, was more similar to RoboCop <laughs> than The Last Unicorn. Did you find any magic in your pocket or in, in your heart? There were some points in this movie where I wanted to say, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> And there were many parts where I just wanted to turn it <laughs> off and go to bed. <laughs> this is, and I don't, I, I don't know if you know your, uh, I guess, animated film history. This is a Rankin Bass movie. Yes, they they did the like Lord of the Rings and Hobbit, like the old ones from. I think they were made before this. I, I think, think they were made in the late seventies. Yeah, I think they yeah. were more seventies. Uh, these guys were a big deal. For yeah, a while they did a lot of TV, a lot of TV specials, a lot of TV movies. Mm-hmm. They didn't do a whole lot of theatrically released films. I think maybe there was this one and one more. Mm-hmm. Um, but people know who they are. This actually got a. Uh, a Blu-ray release recently. Of course it did. For the fans. For the real fans. That... I would love to. And I really should have tried to find out what the special features were. So I would well, love there is. Was... There's like a commentary of some kind, I think I read. Do which... you have it? Oh, oh okay. I, mean, I was going to I... say, are you going to hold it up right now over <laughs> Skype? No, but it is. I mean, I do have a birthday coming up. That's why it's a birthday pick. So, um, okay. All right. It is added to my list for all those fans of ours. Okay. Are they fans? sending us stuff? I Shouldn't don't they know. Have an address? Maybe they should. Listen, if you want to send us stuff, fans, <laughs> private message us in Facebook or Twitter. I'll give out my address. I don't really I care. I will, too. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. So send us stuff. I don't know what you're going to send us. If you send us a movie from the 80s, we'll do that movie. Yeah, we'll do it. If you have totally. two copies to spare. And you want to send one our way. And if it's a VHS copy, I have a VCR player. So don't worry. I'll play it. I don't Whatever. have – don't send me VHS. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think they work this way. I can hold it up to light. I can hold the tape up to light. But I don't think it's like a film strip. I can reenact like, I them for see. you. That's what can happen is once I see them, then I'll reenact them. Like I could have totally reenacted most of this. No, I could not have done the singing that Mia Farrow did though. Mm, Probably not. You could have done it. <laughs> Was I don't it? know if it would have been as pitchy dog as what she did. <laughs> she was terrible. All right. Let's dig let's, in. Let's go. You got to walk us through this. All this, right. This is littered with famous people. <laughs> it is. It is. The cast is – there's there's Angela Lansbury. There's Jeff Bridges. There's Mia Farrow. There's Alan Arkin. Um, Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee. Lee Ping? I think that's it. I don't know. Oh, I just said Lee Ping. I was like, what? Mm-hmm. what? Lee Ping <laughs> played 
I don't know. The, the turkey vulture with breasts. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It was the tree that had breasts. No, no, okay. no. You didn't notice that that, um, that bird, that evil bird, had that ate three mommy. of them? It had three oh, of them, yeah. like in total recall. It was disgusting. <laughs> this is a children's movie. All right, let's get into these creatures and critters and, and fondness of the forest. Okay, so the movie we're talking about is The Last Unicorn. 1982, same year that Jeff Bridges did Tron, he was doing this. I assume during his lunch breaks on Tron. I assume he did a lot of acid in 1982. A lot of it. I I can almost picture him phoning his lines in while he's lounging by his pool that (laughs) Tron paid for. What about the songs? Okay, okay. All right. So here we have The Last Unicorn, a movie that I remember from my own childhood. Um. Although I hadn't seen it since I was a child, so it was so great oh. to revisit. It was so great. It's an animated feature, but not the kind of like cheese ball. Not, I don't not want to say that Disney animation is cheese ball. It had a very different animated feel, wouldn't you say, overall? Is, is Herky Jerky an animated feel? Because it had that <laughs> in spades. Herky Jerky, I call it majestic, magical, and purple. Those There's are my words. There's a scene very early on where a, an owl... Is in a tree. Yeah, that's and, part of the opening, isn't it? Right, and goes to fly, and it literally looks like it's tumbling out of the tree until the camera, like, swings violently, and it kind of then looks like it takes off. This is bad animation. I, I I'm i just going to come right out. I was going to save that till the end, but it really is. Like, this is just above the Smurfs. I, 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 it's like Hanna-Barbera, like... <laughs> I it's suppose you're good. right, but but at the same time, it's the animation that I first like got to know, I guess, as a kid. Like, it's what kind of ignited my imagination. And then, oh so. yeah, I was used to this. So I mean, this was I very it. nostalgic because it yeah. feels very early '80s, yes. late '70s. Yes. But the I I do want to say that the background animation is really nice. It's like beautiful. Like everything that looks like it's painted. The forest and all yes. that. Yes. So she. Yeah. We start out, and it's springtime in a very magical um, forest, and um, there are some hunters. That are, our little friend, the unicorn, overhears. The hunters are talking about how there is only there. There are no unicorns left. She overhears the fact. Of, she didn't know. I guess she's wandering around the magic forest. Hadn't thought. Well, I hadn't seen any of my friends lately. She just figured they were out there. And really, it's like sleuthy. she woke up in a, from a coma or it was like Rip Van Winkle or something. <laughs> Apparently every unicorn that ever existed is gone and she didn't seem to notice this was happening. No, she didn't know until she overheard these these hunters say it and she was like, wait a minute, could this be true? Am I the last? And I have to tell you, I don't know how you felt about Mia Farrow's voice, but as a kid I don't think I noticed it like this. But as an adult watching, she comes off as kind of a bitch oh, of a unicorn, clearly. right? <laughs> like a yeah. snobbish. Uh, as a kid, I don't think I saw it that way. Maybe I saw her more refined. Like, oh, she's a mature unicorn. And it's weird, too, because when we hear her thoughts, there's like this echo track that happens. <laughs> and it sounds like it's recorded three miles away from where <laughs> she's standing. <laughs> right, right. I thought the voice acting... Other than Jeff Bridges, was pretty good in this. Uh, agreed. Well, yeah, the people really seemed to be into what they yes, were doing. Yes. And I thought Mia Farrow was fine. Well, I, I thought she was fine. I just for her voice itself just comes off a little. Um, well, I don't know. yeah, and I don't know if that was direction saying, "Listen, this unicorn, total bit. Yes, you got to play it up." <laughs> At one point, the guy, the the wizard guy, says something like. Oh, but don't worry about that. And she's like, eh, I wasn't. Yeah, and <laughs> like, she tells yeah, him. Yeah, don't worry about me. And he's like, yeah. eh, I wasn't. <laughs> she does. Yes. Okay. So she, uh, where am I? Where am I? I don't uh, know what you're looking for because nothing happens. For nothing. Well, we meet all the sleeping movie. forest animals and the owl and mm-hmm. the, she, she says that the, the unicorns don't vanish. They're not supposed to vanish. And she could not possibly be the last. And then she finds a singing blue butterfly, or singing blue butterfly oh, comes upon her. He's so wow. annoying, that blue He's butterfly. So did he remind you of the little worm 
from Labyrinth. Oh, yes. He reminded because, yeah. And I almost feel like that must have been modeled off of this. He still has the aviator scarf yeah. and the glasses on top yeah. of his head. Yeah. And he's a lunatic yeah. in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's a lo- Well, he reminded me also of another movie that I liked in my childhood a lot. Um, the Cheshire Cat in um, mm-hmm. uh, Alice in Wonderland. Just that kind of weird, annoying, I've got a tale to tell you, but I'm going to rhyme it or sing it or... Da-da-da-da. Yeah, there was a lot of borrowing that went on in this movie mm. from other movies and stories. <laughs> but he is voiced by Robert Klein. Yeah. I don't, and he does a great job, too. Yeah, no, he does. But um, he doesn't, like... I didn't understand what was happening because he would tell her things and then he did sort of a weird Rumpelstiltskin thing where yeah. she tried to guess his name and, and I, it, the, their whole interaction. He was just a weirdo to me. He was just like this weird butterfly that was annoying and didn't give her really anything except he kind of tipped right. her off that, Hey, maybe you're not the last and maybe they're all out there somewhere and you should try to find them. And she's like, Oh, but you're right in that. He bugs her and he says all this weird stuff and he doesn't really help her. And that is it. Like, scene over. And I feel like a lot of times in this movie, that is what happened. You meet people, weird shit that doesn't make sense happens. Scene over, let's move on. And then you move on. Right, right. Does he, he gives her the hot tip about the Red Bull, though, right? Yeah, I did so much research. I'm almost embarrassed to say all the research I did trying to find out if a Red Bull is a mythological creature creature and i found nothing because it seems so specific like there is this unicorn there is this red bull like these are myths they should go together they should be taken from old religions right i couldn't find anything about a red bull i appreciate your research i think that's kind of nice no problem but i just figured think about the uh, think about a red bull that doesn't come in a can think about that he's he's a scary flaming demonic looking bull that apparently yeah. chased them down but okay so we don't know the details yet or the unicorn is not privy to she just knows there's no. this butterfly has whispered things of a red bull and she has decided to leave the enchanted forest and go on and find where her unicorn friends could be and she Trumps but she is, has no point of reference. She just starts walking. No, she just figures if she just leaves the Enchanted Forest, which is all she knows, and the Enchanted Forest is a lovely place where nothing bad ever happens and unicorns live. Not- yeah, the, the hunters actually make it a point to say, oh, there must be a unicorn here. We're not going to find any game. Yeah, but yeah, What does yeah. that mean? How are the two it, related? <laughs> Because there's no, there's, it doesn't snow in the Enchanted Forest. It's just a mystical, magical, amazing place where. But when the unicorn leaves the forest, mm-hmm. all of her woodland friends, all the game that these guys said were there, <laughs> line up to basically, I guess, bid her a fond yeah, farewell. Yeah, they let her, they say so long and she tromps off out of the forest. And she's, she's not, she's, she's a very mature uh, unicorn. She's not shaped like a My Little Pony, sort of chunky and hippie, and no. she's she's got knobby Very legs, sleek, yes. long, like an elongated unicorn. I guess. Yes, she's a mature unicorn. Uh, she travels. She travels through seasons, through winter. She's traveling a long time. No, no idea how long to this get takes. to. I don't know where. Um, and then she finally, I guess, enters. The real world out of the Enchanted Forest and... I guess, but there were people in the Enchanted Forest. I I don't know. I guess they, when they're in the forest, they have to, like you said, the hunters didn't want to stay long because they couldn't hunt there. I guess when they enter the forest, they know they have to leave. Because now when she's in the real world and she does encounter some people, like a friar of some kind, doesn't she? I think it's just a farmer. Oh, okay. He's trying to till the land, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, that, with his rototiller, perhaps? Still, that's right, with his rototiller. <laughs> but this is where we're treated to the, I guess, idea that people cannot see a unicorn. They can't people see, see it horn. as a horse. Right, right, they just see her. And she's so offended by this. She's like, I'm not a horse. How yeah. dare I'm not a simple man. I'm a yeah, unicorn. And, and again, the guy tries to catch her or kidnap her yeah because she's a pretty little horse yeah she kind of knocks him over and runs away and that's the end of that scene yeah 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 well i think that again is just to say in the real world people don't see unicorns 
Maybe because they don't believe. But don't then know. there's another montage of a unicorn walking around. Like, we had a montage of her walking broken up by about 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And then another long montage where, oh, this soundtrack this is, is all America. This, this is, is oh, all yeah. America. They did mm -hmm. the soundtrack. When this first song kicks in, her sad solo song about how it's so sad and lonely to be a unicorn when you have no other unicorn <laughs> friends around. And she's... um. It's raining out, and, right? There's a bird. It's so sad. It's like a... I just imagine America getting these songs, because I doubt they wrote them, <laughs> and just looking over them going, how many fucking songs are about unicorns? Unicorns. How many times do we have to sing a song uh -huh. about a unicorn? At least twice in this movie. And the unicorn being alone, and needing, and being confused, and not knowing, and... Oh, my God. She's sad. She's, it's, it's dark times for the unicorn. I think if there right. was a bar that she could pony up to, she would have. Because it's pony up to? Yeah, you like that? Good one, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, that's our first. Oh, the Americana songs are the Americana. Uh, did she okay. just call it Americana? Americana, I did. I did. I did. <laughs> oh, uh, somebody wrote on Twitter. They said, I guess they were listening to oh, Three Amigos. And they uh. just said, did Jamie just say olive oil away? <laughs> hey, listen. You should enjoy it when I when I mistaken when I fumble through my words. It's not always easy. Okay, this is a live podcast. It is live in that I'm listening to you right now. <laughs> Speak to me live. Oh. Our next character that we're introduced to has a very um goofy name, Mommy. Mommy Fortuna, right? It is, it is not goofy compared to most of the other characters <laughs> in this movie. I guess that's true. But you're right, Mommy Fortuna, which makes me think that she's a fortune teller, but she's not. Like, Well, she's kind literally of a witch. Literally, fortune is, is her, her last name. name. Right, right. She's a witch, I guess, right? She is. Is this Angela Lansbury? Yes. Okay. Yes, All right. which is okay. kind of fun. She, she's a witch who wears a tree on her head she's a, that a crow just hangs out in. Awesome. It's awesome. And again, a, a lot of this movie, uh, not to skip ahead, but my recommend, yeah, I, I won't skip too far. A lot what of this are movie. What are you doing? Are we done? Oh, no, we no, no. Shut it down A now? lot of this movie reminded me of um, Labyrinth. Like, oh, you know, of course. Right? So, yeah. Um, Mommy Fortuna runs R. a R. carnival. David Bowie. Yeah, we love you. The Goblin King is always alive in my heart. Um, she, Mommy Fortuna runs a carnival of. Like mystic it's like a creatures, freak show, basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But really, what she does is oh, okay. So she finds the unicorn, and she recognizes. She could see the horn. She knows that it's a unicorn. Right. The unicorn is sleeping, and she puts a spell on it so that she sleeps even longer. So she right? Keeps sleeping. So she just stays asleep, and that they could capture her. Otherwise, they would not be able to capture her, and they right. cage her. And um, now she's part of the carnival. Um, right. She's part of a freak show where the animals are just like old, broken down, sad real animals. Sad little animals, yeah. That, that she, she, I guess, puts a spell on either the animal or the people watching so they think that these are mythical creatures. Right. I think it's that she puts a spell on the viewers, like the people coming to see it, so that they think that they see something that's not there. But at the same time, she puts a fake horn on the unicorn. Right? So that the people can, because in reality, humans will think the unicorn is just a horse. So everyone, like the lion is, is I don't know. It's a, no, it's a lion, but they see it as like a dragon type thing. Right. With, with wings. And I don't know. And then there's like a monkey with a broken arm or something. Like He's wearing like a little cast. <laughs> and I forget what they see him as. But then there's another monster there. There's that bird that I was talking oh, about. Oh, yes, yes. That is, I think they call it a harpy. Yes, right? it's a harpy, yep. Mm -hmm. So she has two real magical animals mm -hmm. and two others that are just fake. Right, right. And then she's this, got... I'm so glad you explained this to me because I'm watching this going, why the hell does the unicorn have two horns? When, when did this oh. happen? Why does it have two horns suddenly? And then later on, I was watching like an hour later and I went, wait, it, it only has one horn now. Like I she, totally she missed it. She puts the fake horn on her to, to, to 
Yeah, to convince everyone else that she has. So besides the animals, though, she's got a hunchback guy that works yep. for her. Yep. I don't um, know what his name is. It I don't matter. know either because he's just sloppy and hangs out. And then she's got – go ahead. Say his name because it's – Schmendrick? <laughs> it's literally like when they made up – when and it's this movie is based off of a book, off of a Peter Beagle, I think is his name, right? That wrote the, the – Peter original. Golden Retriever? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, anyway, Schmendrick. What a name. It's like they literally were just like, Schmendrick. I don't know. Think of a name. I mean, it's such a tough name but to say. He's, Why would you name your name? But he looks character? like he looks like a, um, like a Jewy little wizard guy, oh right? My God. Thank God you said that because <laughs> I was wondering after a while, I was like, is this movie just some subversive anti-Semitism? <laughs> because he's played by Alan Arkin. Right. Right. Jewish. Mm-hmm. And he's got a huge... His <laughs> face is a nose. His <laughs> face is a nose with two tiny eyes. <laughs> it is horrible and insulting on so many levels. Oh, but he's so sweet. Like, he looks at the unicorn and he says, don't worry, don't be afraid. Schmendrick is with you. I'm oh, no, here to no. help. He loves the animals. I, don't, I would love to know how he fell in with this group. Well, it's very interesting. It's like he... he well... He's not got a lot of confidence in himself as a wizard, even though right. he turns People out to be very how good. Terrible he is. Yeah, and then he can't do much. Even he says, like, oh, I'm alone. Do-. Even the unicorn at one point is like, Yeah, we know. If you were better at being a wizard, yeah. you would we would yeah. be in this mess. I like it later when the <laughs> king goes, Well, I tried a really great magician for a while. I think I'll try somebody that's pretty bad at it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh. But I guess he entertains people before the show, before they look at these animals. Like, he's right. the warm-up act. Yes. I yes. guess. That's kind of what he says. And that's what he says. But now, because he is a wizard and magical, he knows, he recognizes the unicorn for what she is and is able to talk to her and explains things to her and is like, don't worry, I'm going to help you out with this. And tells her, basically, is like, look, look at all these animals. They're not real. And kind of opens the unicorns, except for the bird. Right, the, right. The, uh, or the freak bird, Harpy. My favorite thing is after the show and the crowd disperses, what the witch does is wander around and just berate the animals. <laughs> like, that's her post-show pep talk. <laughs> she tells them how terrible they are and how they're her slaves and stuff. And I just assume she does this every, every day night. Every night, right, right, show. right. Sure, it gives her power. It gives her power. He tries to break her out. He tries to break the unicorn out, but oh, with he's a spell. really bad yeah. at it. Like... The cage starts shrinking almost yeah. as though it's going to crush her to death. <laughs> eventually, it eventually he just has the keys on him. Yeah, well, I think that was his like backup after plan. almost murdering her. Yeah. He's like, "Oh, I do have these." He keys does here. a series of spells that just go absolutely terribly wrong, and then he's like, "Well, I didn't think the spells were going to work because I'm such a lousy wizard, so I grabbed the keys anyway, and that's a good backup plan." This yeah. is another example also where the unicorn's kind of a bitch because she's put out because she's never been somewhere where, like, people don't recognize her as a unicorn. And oh. now she's, like, in this world where people don't know that she's a unicorn. And she's like, what? Oh, I just assumed that she had no interaction with people. Well, that is, well, Boy, I don't we're know. really getting deep here. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't you? It's the last unicorn. You, you're right. No, it is the last one. You know what I'm saying? All right. So he can't turn cream into cheese, as he says out loud. But he can release her, finally, Schmendrick, from her mm-hmm. cage. And when he does, uh, he does have a little battle, wrestling battle with the... Um, he wrestles the hunchback, the... He doesn't want her to release the harpy. They release the rest of the animals and they just run away. Right. Um... But the unicorn does, and the harpy kind of has a little fight with the unicorn, not really. No, the harpy is out to get Mommy Fortuna. Fortuna. Right, yeah, the harpy (laughs) straight up murders this elderly woman, (laughs) and I guess eats her? Like, yes! The characters leave, and in the background, we just see this bird sitting on her, I guess, devouring her. <laughs> just pecking the crap out of her. They go to run, and then the unicorn gives great advice, which is something we should all adhere to. You never okay. run from an immortal because it attracts attention. You got right. that, audience? 
Right. It's like bees, right? You don't run from bees. I don't think you wear yellow around bees. I think that's the... Uh, (laughs) I don't know that we're giving out actual advice to anyone. (laughs) Please don't listen to us. Basically, don't mess with bees, guys. And don't kill them, too. Yeah, and the bees are dying. Don't release a harpy if you're the witch that captured her. Definitely don't release your harpy. (laughs) Kill yellow jackets. They are awful. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Don't run for stay completely still, like the like the Tyrannosaurus Rex from Jurassic Park. Well, not that you don't run; you got to walk calmly, which is what Schmendrick and the unicorn do. They don't run like lunatics away. They're she's like, take it easy. Let's let's go quietly, and they do. They leave. And I assume the hunchback's murdered as well. I oh yeah, know, but, I would think that uh, he the, the bird took her out too. Took yeah, him he's out still too. Yeah. on the ground. Um, now this is when we know that unicorns unicorns typically don't feel regret or sorrow, right? Yeah, unicorns are pretty terrible. <laughs> They're just not emotionless. They don't have negative emotions, I guess. They live in an enchanted forest. What do you expect? Yeah, I, I don't know. And when she becomes a human, she's a big basket case. <laughs> I, I, like, I don't know. But anyway, Schmendrick joins her team, I guess. They're, yeah, they're in it now. They're this part- is basically where she's like, I don't give a shit if you come with me. Follow yeah. me, whatever. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm exactly. There. I got a place to be. You're going to be here? Great. You're a shitty wizard. Come along. Yeah, because he's like, bring me along for <laughs> laughs and for company. And yeah, she's like, yeah. Whatever, dude. Follow me if you want, asshole. I, I think she's basically like, you want something that you can't have. Because you could never be a real wizard. Yeah, so. why, why is you're right? You know, you really turned me around on this. She's terrible. She's already killed a couple people, well, basically, she, and now tells her only friend <laughs> that he's really bad at what he does for a living. Well, she is the last of her kind. She's got no other hope, so she might as well. She's right. like, I just need to get back to my people. F the rest of y'all. Right, Um, exactly. It's all about the unicorns. Right. Screw everyone else. He drops a little hint, Schmendrick, about, um, because she's like, tell me more about this. This butterfly told me about this red bull um, and this king. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. King Haggerty, right? Haggerty? (laughs) Um, I think it's just Haggard. Oh. (laughs) Well, uh, okay. So, So Schmendrick's got some knowledge that the unicorn could be privy to. They start on their journey. And they run into some outlaws in the forest. He's immediately right? kidnapped. <laughs> well, so Schmendrick is like, okay, we got to go separate ways and hide because the outlaws are here. We're in the forest. And he hides in a tree where he's immediately found. Um, and This brought- part of the movie to me felt like, and, and I'm sure you've done this sort of writing exercise when you were in high school, mm-hmm. where you have to start writing a story and then pass it to the person next to you and then they continue. <laughs> He's abducted by outlaws, terrified. They bring him to camp. Everybody there is pretty happy it's to see this dude. It's a jolly camp. Yeah, it's a jolly place. He wants to escape. He conjures a spell. Robin Hood's there. It makes no sense. Oh, this is when it does get a little trippy. Yeah, so he he supposedly is a bad wizard, magician, what have you. He kind of butters up to his kidnappers, and he calls the Captain Collie, right? He recognizes the one yeah, outlaw as the I, captain. And and so now they're, like, into him, and they're all around the fire. That's what outlaws in the forest do. They gather around mm-hmm, a fire at night and mm-hmm. sing and, and be jolly. This is where we meet another um, later journey woman. We meet Molly, who, who I think is... wants m- to kill him. She, she d- wants him dead. <laughs> She does not the the king or the whatever the soldier is like. Hey, buddy, sit around. We'll share some food. It's going to be great. And she's like, no, get him out of here. Why Let, is he let's here? Murder He's, him. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> she's one of our heroes. Later, yeah, in guys. the end, yeah, she she makes it through. But you're right in that he is able to perform pretty good magic when he needs it by basically saying, "Magic, do your <laughs> stuff." Like that's, that's all he, he does. That's his spell. And, is like magic. Yeah. Happened. I no. love it how he explains it once and he goes, I don't know. I can't control it. The magic just does whatever it wants. And that's what like, happened. You really are a terrible well, magician. What confused me here is that the unicorn is watching this happen. And so does I not wondered try and help. if she had any. Because so you're right. Now we get this Ooh. trippy sequence where like Robin Hood comes pouncing in because they're telling tales of Robin Hood and his 
allegedly Schmendrick's magic is what gets the ghosts of Robin Hood and all his friends to kind of they march through. They they literally they are ghosts. Yeah, they, they march through mm-hmm. the people. Don't even acknowledge that they're there. Mm-hmm. Wander off into the forest, and the whole group of them blindly follow. Them. They blindly <laughs> follow. They're like, we need to follow Robin Hood. Right. So at one point, then once most of his crew follows the Robin Hood ghost into the forest, the captain and one other dude, I think, decide that Smendrick does need to be watched because he right. clearly is a wizard with power. So this is another trippy. So they tie Smendrick up to a tree yes, to keep an do. eye on him. And <laughs> well, they don't keep an eye on him because they just leave. Then they walk like, away. Well, to keep like, him. Hey, we'll come back for you tomorrow morning when we figure out what to do. Right, exactly. You. We need to go get drunk by the fire right now. Right. Um, the tree. Please explain to me what happens here. Um, Please, because <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> the tree becomes a voluptuous woman. Right? Yeah. It yeah. Holds but, it, him. but it's a tree. Like, it's not like it turns but it's into a, a it woman. But it is a knobby tree. Yeah, it's still a tree. It's with got these lady knobs. parts, but it's, it's clearly still a tree. Well, and it smothers Smendrick in its lady parts. Mm-hmm. Basically, knobs of the tree become two huge breasts, uh-huh. and Smendrick's face is motorboating. <laughs> because <them>. they <laughs> tie him face first <laughs> to the tree. I have never seen that before. I've seen plenty of TV shows movies where people get like tied to posts or trees right with their Never back they just smash their face against it and then wrap rope around it's them. a very weird because i don't know so yeah he he's she just wants him she doesn't even want to hurt him right she doesn't she just want to like the tree uh, yeah i don't know they they don't stay with this that no way. it's not much more of a it, it is really just Interesting, because then the tree, so the unicorn comes and releases him, and then the tree goes back to its natural form. And when it goes back to its natural it form, made me, like, it made me want the tree to be voiced by Dolly Parton. It, Do you think like that would make so much sense? Oh, uh, if amazing. Dolly Parton lended her voice at all to the music, of it would have made for a whole oh. different last unicorn. And I know you would have enjoyed it thoroughly. <laughs> I think I would have. Yes. Yeah, I know you would. Yeah. Have. I know it. But I don't understand, like. The unicorn comes to save him, basically, just by pressing her horn on the ropes, and they kind of fall off, and he runs away. Right. But as he's running away, he's like, did you see that? Did you see what I did? So did he turn that tree into a woman? He could have, maybe with his spells, because his spells are so messed up. Oh, I don't... Oh. I didn't write he, it He here. says, did you see what I did? Like, yeah, maybe And I don't he, know if he's talking about making Robin Hood. I don't know if he I think he meant the Robin Hood thing. I think he meant the Robin Hood thing. Like, did you see what I did? And that's why I always wondered, yeah, but did she really do that? Yeah. To help him out? Uh, or is that just like a freakish tree that becomes a woman whenever a dude is near it? <laughs> And we're not in the Enchanted Forest anymore, so There's I wouldn't so think so. There's so much unexplained greatness in this movie. Big question mark. Big question oh. mark. But a lot of fun, nonetheless. Um, but this is when the woman with the crazy hair, what was her name again? Molly. 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 Mm-hmm. And she does have crazy hair and kind of a raspy, like, cigarette voice. But she kind of pops out of the bushes. And she starts to cry. She start, When she sees the unicorn. Yeah. She can see the unicorn as the unicorn. But this doesn't make sense. Like, this movie, like, it introduces us to a world and doesn't give us any explanation as to what's going on in this world. She cries and says it's because the unicorn didn't come to her as a child. when she was a child. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Is that what unicorns are supposed to do in this world? Well, like, bless children so they don't become homeless and have to hang out with all these dudes by a fire? <laughs> <laughs> like she seems to blame the unicorn with the fact that she is really down right. on her luck for her bad for her bad fortunes in life. Yeah. Well, it made me think that maybe, and again, I didn't read the books. So maybe that would provide some more insight. Um, that maybe like only women, maybe only women and children could see unicorns, and but that's Schmenter why can because he's magic. He's a wizard. See, I, yeah, I, I don't. Or maybe only those that believe. So yeah, she's upset because. Because this is the last person that sees her as a unicorn anyway. Like, this is it. Well, no. The, later, the king, when he meets her, has a feeling that she is yeah, but because of her eyes. But he's... He is loony to Yeah, crazy, he's a little though. cracked out. Like, the castle's a hot mess. All right, let's get there. Okay. 
oh, we're there, basically. They join. She joins their group. They and go they on the start quest. walking again. They're yes. on their quest. And now we have another song, right? The, the moon gazing I don't, There's song. songs littered throughout this movie. Um, well, they... Yeah, okay, you're right. There are songs throughout this movie. Yeah. Um, but They all sound the same. They're on their quest, on their journey, and they camp out for a night. They're all sleeping, and then... She sees the bull's light, right? The light from the bull? Yeah, and it's just light. It's just like a big ball of light in the distance, yeah, I yeah. guess. Mm-hmm. But I, I assume it's coming toward them, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's coming especially toward the unicorn. And right. she's being chased, and Molly's like, No, Smendrick! She sees it! She sees the light! Um, and again, he just says, magic, magic, do whatever the hell you're going to do. Uh-huh. And it turns her into a woman. Yeah. She, her, her little legs is a long-haired, naked woman. Yeah. Um, he seems pretty proud. But what's her name? Mary. Why can't I think of I, Molly. I her Molly. Her name is Molly. Yeah, he's proud that I think every time Schmendrick's magic actually does something, he's like, well, well, well it worked. Oh, my God. It did something. <laughs> Meanwhile, like you said, it's not like he even casts spells. He's just like, schmingen, schmongen, hoogen, hagen, magic, do your thing. And then it does something, and yeah. he's always surprised that it... It's like he's just born with this, but never really practiced yeah. it. And he's like, I don't know, I got the power, but <laughs> yeah, why yeah. screw with I it? I don't know, like, they gave me the robe and the hat, it's, so I it's figured... It's gonna do what it's yeah. gonna do. <laughs> magic, you lead the way. I'm magic's whore. That's what I am. She's got these big, giant purple eyes, too. Oh, yeah. Which is great, because she got... had them as a unicorn. As well. And she's, I love it when she wakes, so when she, she, Schmendrick's so happy that he actually put out a spell, Molly's upset because how could you, she's a unicorn and now she's a woman and she's just going to be a miserable woman like myself, <laughs> like we yeah. all are. And and even the unicorn whose new name is like, uh, 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 Athena, what's her new name? Mm, Why can't, hold on. I, I'm, 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 I'm is... Athena? Um, okay, well she turns I'll her into this you purple-eyed, long haired um woman who she's not happy to be either she's like i'm afraid i'm afraid of this human body she's so emotional but they're led to the castle by the bull right or does molly know the way to the castle No, they know where the castle is i guess yeah now that they've gone this far they're like well we've gone this far now we know where the castle is the king lives very simply in this castle it's pretty much a rundown beat up well, they're the basically led into the castle by two guards who end up being the king and his son. Oh, right, 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 right. Who I guess are the only people. At one point they say that they have um, four people that work for them. Amalthea. <laughs> See, I told you. That's not how they say You're it right, either yes. in the movie. Like, Amalthea. That sounds, Whatever. That is not how magical her name sounds. Um, Amalthea. <laughs> I'm Althea. Hey. <laughs> anyway, I just called her Unicorn Girl in my notes, and I think that that works. Okay, that'll work for our purposes, yes. Even yeah, I don't – like, there's this castle that they have to get to basically because – and I don't know when we find this out. Mm-hmm. The Red Bull lives in this castle. Oh, yeah. He belongs to the king. The Red Bull belongs right. to the king. Is it Molly that – Gives that information? Who knows? She seems to be the most <laughs> sensible one in this movie, so I'm going to say yes to that. Oh, yeah, okay. she does make a lot. She does help us solve it. Well, maybe not yet. It kind of is a mystery. It's like, okay, let's find this Red Bull, and once we find the Red Bull, we will find out what happened to these unicorns. Right, right. Like, I guess the unicorn kind of feels like they're not dead. Right, like she feels like she could find somewhere. them. Yeah, she doesn't think they could all just vanish. She believes that they exist somewhere. Yes, and now oh, th- also this is where um, the king talks about who they have working for them, and it's like four guys, and he also has a magician, right, Maverick, who, Maverick, who's really good, yeah. like a really good magician. Yeah, yeah. and he fires him so oh. that he can have Schmendrick as his magician. But did you note this line that when he's fired, um, the prince is like, don't worry, I'll write you a reference. Yeah, I'll write you, write you like a letter of recommendation <laughs> for your new job. But what I love is that when this magician shows up who's amazing 
He looks and goes, oh, Schmendrick. So yes, they recognize guy, each other. Yeah. He must be like famous for being the worst magician mm-hmm, out mm-hmm. there. And they just tell stories about him and make fun of him around the Well, magicians. with the name like Schmendrick, let's be real. So the king's a bit, a bit loony. Like you, he's clearly evil. Like there's no yeah, question that he is evil. Yeah, he's a little off his rocker. Yeah. But little... he's totally fine with them staying there. Like he doesn't. Kick them out. Yeah, he's first he doesn't upset seem to that care. they're there, but then he's not really. He tells them they could stay, but he does notice. So she, as a human girl, she's she's very aloof. She doesn't interact with anybody. She stares out the window. Right. And the king kind of, I think everybody kind of senses something's up. Schmendrick says that it's his niece, the yeah. Lady Amalthea. Yeah. Um, which who believes? It's a good story, dude. Yeah, exactly. With a <laughs> schnoz like, like yours, she's too pretty. She doesn't belong to your family line. But whatever. Now, She's clearly of Aryan yeah. descent. <laughs> exactly. And the king, is it the king looks in her eyes and he can't <laughs> see his, his reflection, reflection, which that he is tells him bugging something. out to this. Yes, because that's supposed to be a sign. That's, that's a sign that maybe she's a mystical, magical creature that has a horn. Um, we're now, can I talk about this next part for a bit? Because this is where the movie bothered me probably more than them just aimlessly wandering Mm -hmm. because after this when he says you guys can stay we then get another song of course and a montage of them like I guess fitting in around the castle oh finding their way if in the castle right so what's her name Molly (laughs) keep wanting to call her Mary so Molly like, all her things are like, I can cook and I can clean. Like, She's that's the it. kitchen that's help. She does. She's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then, like, randomly, Jeff Bridges is fighting dragons. Because that's, he is trying to earn um, Amalthea's love and affection. So he's trying to do all these brave acts. But what I needed mm-hmm. from this scene mm-hmm. is, first of all, maybe a longer montage. I never thought I'd ask for that. Movie, <laughs> but maybe longer. Because we don't really see what Schmendrick's up to. We don't even really see what the unicorn girl's up to. No, no, we see her cooking. I need like a voiceover. Like I need Molly to say something like, and days turned into weeks <laughs> and months. Because I have no idea how long they're there. They don't seem to be rushed. Like they kind of seem to have forgotten that they're looking for a bull. Right, right. Jeff Bridges is clearly in love with this He's girl. Smitten. Well, and what maybe is, it took place in the over 12 hours. Like, I don't know how much time is passing. Because Mia Farrow kind of forgot that she was ever a unicorn. Well, that's what's starting to slowly happen is that in her human form, she's for, she's getting like, like a mean, like she can't remember why she's there or what she's right. searching for. She knows she's searching for something, but she can't remember what. She does keep looking at the sea, though, because the castle is right on the seashore. And um, she sings a song about not remembering. Oh, her song is terrible. <laughs> She's awful because, like, they made her sing really high. Like, really high <laughs> to where it was embarrassing. When she would hit those high notes, I'm like, can't you just... Can't you just pull a Disney and you have a voice actor? Yes, and, you and have, have a, someone. Well, who later sings. on when she has a little duet with the prince, I it doesn't sound exact. It sounds like a better voice. So I wondered if they were like. Oh. I thought I didn't know if it was better, or I was just distracted by how bad Jeff Bridges was. <laughs> he doesn't even sing. He's speaking. Basically. He talks. Yeah, he talks, and they said it's a music. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> he's like, I am a prince. Oh, but but this is where, before he starts singing, mm-hmm. my favorite character in the whole movie shows up. My <laughs> favorite character is a cat. The peg leg cat. Who uh-huh. wears an eye patch and has a peg leg. And I love it when Molly, Molly? Yes. Molly, yeah. When Molly's petting him and he goes, purr, purr. <laughs> That's good. That's right. Purr. Which is, it I, doesn't even purr. Like, it says yeah. the word purr. But that's how I imagine a real cat interacts. Like, when you pet a real cat, it's really not, it's like purr, purr. 
That feels but when good. she was petting it, I was so wrapped up in the fact that it's saying the word purr that suddenly I went, wait, it's talking like a pirate because then it says things like a vast ye matey. And I was like, oh, my God, it has an eye patch. Oh, it has a peg like yeah. I didn't know what was happening in this scene. But the Molly talks and gets a lot of information from yeah, this cat yeah, she, about yeah. where the Red Bull is. And she finds out it's in, like, the basement, I guess. Uh, I'll call it the dungeon. Because it's yeah, a castle. Yeah, castles don't have basements. <laughs> yeah. And where did this cat come from? Like, I guess it just lived at the castle. It just hangs out at the castle. It's the peg-like cat that's there to just share knowledge. Or it's the butterfly reincarnated. I loved it. And I think I got through the rest of the movie just hoping the cat would come back. Like, I just kept going, oh, maybe the cat's going to come back. Maybe it's going to talk. Maybe it's going to, like, limp out of the rubble of the castle at the end. <laughs> but that's the only time we see the cat, and I was kind of sad. Just enough to give us the information that we need, right? right. About where to find this. Right. When do we – don't we know this whole time? When do we find out about where the unicorns are? Do we know? Well, this is when – I wrote, things just start happening because <laughs> Unicorn Girl is, again, looking at the sea. And the king goes up to her and he knows something's up. But he just starts ranting like a lunatic. <laughs> and first of all, Jeff Bridges is adopted. Oh, yeah. He's he not even a real prince. Yeah. He's not even really his son. He's like, yeah, he's not even really mine. He showed up at my door one day and I just yeah. kept him, right? And this is when he stares down at the ocean and just goes like, can you see them down there <laughs> running and swimming? And, and the unicorn girl looks and is like, dude, you're totally bonkers. Like, there's nothing down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the water, you loony tick, right? But this is when he explains what happened. Like, we get everything in flashback. I kind of uh, like the flashback because there was no color. Yeah, yeah. It was like a real sepia tone type thing. Right, right. But yeah, this is where we find out what happened to the unicorns. That they are yes. they are in the sea. They are. Yeah. So the bull gathered them. The king wanted them all because they were so magical and beautiful and he wanted to just be oh. able to look at all of them. He is weird. And he's so psycho. <laughs> so psycho. Um, and then he gets this red bull to kind of push them and gather them all into the water where now he can watch them all in the waves. And that's why the whole time a Marthy, a math, the, the unicorn girl is obsessed. She's always staring at the water, presumably because she knows that the unicorns are there. As that's how the king says it. I don't think he calls but them unicorns. But it's weird because she senses that they're there. But when he literally tells her they're there, she goes, "Nope, there's nothing there, man." Well, but that's when he then looks at her, and now he can see her reflection in in his eye in their eyes, right? And her mark, she had that weird pink mark in the middle of her head. She basically had a big hole in her head. <laughs> where the, the horn was. would be. And now the mark is gone. So he's, right. she's starting to kind of adjust and change. But little do we know, she's also slowly falling in love with the prince. They've sang their duet already, uh, by the way. We missed that part where the prince and... I the, will gladly miss it. I, you know, yeah, it really again, was pretty terrible. It was terrible. Like yeah. you said, Jeff Bridges just kind of talks... It's really bad singing. I have to put that song at the end of this. I have to. You, you should. No, you With totally should. With all this talk of unicorns and those songs would be great, I, you have to listen to Jeff Bridges talk its oh way to a song. Oh, my God. It's not. It's totally speaking, not singing completely. Now they run into my, Well, I'm surprised this wasn't your other favorite character besides the, oh. the drunk skeleton. Second favorite, <laughs> easily. <laughs> He helps them find the Red Bull because he wants wine so bad. He's such a wino. They give him an empty bottle. Like, Mo I'm so confused. No, don't they give him... Molly tells him to turn wine into water or something, right? Doesn't she give him water to turn okay. into wine, rather? Or? Maybe we watch this differently because I thought Schmendrick basically said, ooh, and, like, performed a fake, like, spell... Oh, to tell him yeah. that there was wine in this yes, bottle. Yes, yes, yes. And he's begging for this wine, and the rest of them are kind of like looking around going, is he seriously falling for this? Like, <laughs> this is insane. And he drinks air. 
and gets and it goes plastic. through him. Yeah, and he's totally plastic. His cheekbones become flushed, like they become red. The bones on his face <laughs> turn red, like his cheeks would. It's kind of good. Kind of. And good. again, he just spouts nonsense. Like he's saying, they're like, "Where's the bull?" And he's like, "It's inside that clock." And right. What do you mean? And he's like, time, blah, blah, blah. It's just nonsense. Yeah. It really is. Again, he's like the cat and like the butterfly, just kind of spewing right. out information and you get exactly. it. Kinda... But they kind of just walk into the clock and it teleports them yeah. into the basement mm-hmm. of the castle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now all of a sudden they're there. The prince is there. The prince is totally there. He's because before he's stalking his lady friend, so he's right there with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're all in there now, finding the Red Bull. Now the right. king finds out that they're in there, and goes nuts yeah. again, right? And right. destroys the clock. He smashes destroys the clock. the clock. So the only way out is basically to go through the Red Bull right. layer. Right. Right. Which, that's where they that's were going That's what they anyway. were going like, anyway. I know. I didn't understand yeah. why they had to. I think they were just trying to show you what a lunatic the king was. <laughs> like, we didn't already know. I thought there was a great part here where, um, you know, they they finally tell the prince that she's a unicorn. Mm-hmm. And that they're going to turn her back into a unicorn. And when that happens, like, they can't be together. And he mm-hmm. straight up says, dude, I'll marry a unicorn. <laughs> like, I am, <laughs> I am down with this. We're going to get married. I will not stop loving you even when you're a horse. Like, it's <laughs> really weird. He's like, I'm, I'm not even, I'm adopted anyway. I don't even know what my, <laughs> I might be part unicorn for all I know. Mm-hmm. Um, but she doesn't want to be a unicorn either. Like it's, it's Well, at this point now, she's feeling a little more human. She feels a little more love. And so she's. She's on the fence if she wants to even... And she's not even sure what she's doing here anymore, remember? She's confused. She doesn't really recall. Yeah. She doesn't have that same passion she started out with, where I'm the last of me, I have to find the rest of me. Now she's like, what the hell am I doing? Maybe I kind of dig these legs and this prince. Yeah, Um, I mean, this is a part in the movie where they're all kind of arguing... And Molly's saying to Schmendrick, bah, 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 all you care about is being a great magician. And and then, oh, I don't want to be a unicorn. I love being a person. I right. love you. And other than them saying this, I didn't feel like any of this was shown to us. We don't know why he loves her other than like, he's... Why do they keep <clears throat> telling Schmendrick that all he wants is to be a great magician? I don't think he ever says that. No, I but think everybody he's... keeps telling him that he wants that. I think he's pretty confident in his lousy magicianship. Right. Like... It's been working, really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It comes in handy like it, when it needs to. And <laughs> he... Yeah, I don't think he wants to... He, he's he's not using the unicorn to be a better magician. He wanted something no. to do, basically. So right, he was yeah. like, I'll hang out with you. Oh, great. He's like, well, my past employers are dead. Yeah, exactly. So I got to do something. She got her eyes gouged out by a loony bird. Yeah. So, um, and, and the prince falling in love with the... It's not like she didn't even talk to him. He even is bitching about that at one point. Peeling, literally, the prince is peeling potatoes with Molly in the kitchen, and it's like she doesn't even talk to me. She won't pay attention to me. Where he so cuts his did, thumb twice yeah. in a row, <laughs> one pass of the knife. Ow! The very next time he tries it, oh! She's like, turn it away from me, <laughs> right, baby. <yes. laughs> um, so yeah, you don't even know really why they're in love, other than maybe this is the first real woman he has seen in a long, long time. I would say that's the only reason because, like you said, we never see her speak to him. No, it's not like they until have. They kind of sing to each other, but I don't even know if they're in the same room and even they're singing. They are. They're on the balcony together, oh, but even okay. then, it's not like they're singing to each other. I think they're both singing about loneliness. Right, yes. <laughs> right? Yes. Um, so they, yeah. But anyway, now is his chance. Um, all he wants to do, the prince, is serve her. That's what he wants to do, and he doesn't quite know how. And our... well, hold on, she turns into a unicorn. Oh, they, Schmendrick Schmendrick turns does her the... back yes. into a unicorn because we're with the bull. Be... Yeah, the bull, I guess, may kill them. Yes, but she turns into a unicorn to, I guess, distract it, and so it chases her around and everything right. like that. But go right. ahead, because this is also a great part of the movie that I laughed at when Schmendrick encourages the prince to be a hero. 
Yes, exactly. At his own, because heroes just shine when it's time for them to shine. And he's like, well, I want a server. And he was like, well, yeah. So go ahead and do what heroes do. Go on and protect her, right? He does. I, I've never seen a more pointless death. It's like, <laughs> I'm going to be a hero. Bam. Face down on the <laughs> yeah, beach. Yeah. You're dead. You didn't even slow it down. Like, <laughs> nothing happened. And I do love that part. Yeah, he's just really like, funny. a goof. And done. Yeah. <laughs> he does just kind of stand there like, I guess I can stop this Well, who jumps in front bull. of a giant fiery bull thinking that... He doesn't even have a weapon on him. He was fighting no. dragons with swords, and now he just jumps willy-nilly in front of the bull. Like, yeah. that's going to help. But it does, <laughs> it's because wonderful. the unicorn, being a unicorn but still having these feelings of a human and seeing her lover <clears throat> dead, she gets angry. So mm -hmm. where in the past the bull was able to chase the unicorns away, she's got the love in her heart. And she, and, and the anger, I guess, and she chases mm -hmm. back, or she fights back. Yeah, she kind of just bull. turns around yeah. and then chases the bull, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, and then... And backs him into the sea. Where? where he's swallowed by a wave of unicorns. Unicorns, magical. P.S. She is, I don't know how she didn't realize she wasn't, that she was the last unicorn. There are literally thousands of unicorns in the sea and how she could i don't the enchanted forest didn't seem that big so i don't know how she thought that how she was i don't know if it's like all these a world where there's like one unicorn per forest throughout this entire <laughs> world and she just didn't get the news that the rest of them are gone or something and and i don't need to hear every unicorn talk as it comes out of the ocean but we don't right. hear anything they just they go right past her. No thanks. No, no, they just, no good they to see ya. Nothing. Brought off. Nope. And the king is pissed, and, and the, for no reason, his entire castle his castle crumbles, falls down. It crumbles down into oh, the water. I don't think we. I don't think we, we talked a lot about the voice acting, and I don't know if it's so much the voice acting or just the voice. But Christopher Lee did a great job as a Oh, king. yes. He's I agree. fantastic. I agree. Totally agree. R.I.P. Christopher Lee. Wait, he's dead, right? Yeah. He just died not too long ago. Yes. Okay. Rip it. Rip it. Like R.I.P. But rip. Never mind. No, yeah, I know that that <laughs> also spells a word. <laughs> the, the, the band of heroes, I guess, gather around the dead prince. <laughs> yes. Kill and the unicorn, I guess, resurrects him. With her horn, <laughs> yeah, right. She like bends down and like pokes Wee! him with the horn in the head, yeah, uh huh. And then just runs away. She's like, I can't let this dude see me. No, like, he's in love with the horse. This is really weird. <laughs> and I love him. It's not going to work. She gallops away. Yeah, ha being the only unicorn that has ever felt love or regret because she has regrets now. Re yes. She's grown as yeah. a unicorn. She's a woman. It's like she's a unicorn going through her menstrual <laughs> she cycle. She's just a little unicorn, yeah. and now she's a <laughs> unicorn. Nice. Nice. We are not privy to any information in this movie as to what had been happening in that castle and for how long. <laughs> because the prince kind of just goes, hey, guys, thanks. His dad's dead. His like, home is his gone. His home is gone. The girl gone. he fell in love with became a unicorn and left. He doesn't remember falling in love with a unicorn. Mm -hmm. That memory's gone. Mm -hmm. But he is super happy to just get on his horse and just take off. He's like, and then it's kind of like Schmendrick and Molly are like, nope. I guess it's us. You want to come with me? Sure, come with me. <laughs> right. She's like, and he literally says, come with me. And she's like, I will. And they're off. Yep. And they're and in love. And Anticlimactic end. Not necessarily. The unicorns well, have been released. I and did like the unicorn waves and the unicorns running right. away. I, I thought that that was really nice. And, and you're right. The ending wasn't, wasn't bad at all. Mm-mm. Mm. -mm. mm. <laughs> Mm -mm. Oh, and that's it. That's, and that's uh, the it. last yeah, unicorn. Now that's it. Now that's, that's how that's it is. A wrap. That's a wrap on the last unicorn. Do you want to give your final thoughts first? Uh, because I would love to hear your thoughts as a person who loved this movie as a kid mm -hmm. and hasn't revisited it since then. As a kid, I remember uh, being very sad at the ending and having a hard time. Like, you know when you're a kid and your favorite movie, you watch it again and again and again? I remember uh, not 
like really having to consider if I wanted to watch it again because the movie would make me so sad at the end. Wow. And I don't remember if it was because I was so emotional about the unicorns being released or I was sad that she had to leave her prince behind. You weren't sad that the bull was dead, right? <laughs> <laughs> you were just rooting for him the Maybe. whole time. <laughs> I just remember feeling like thinking like, oh, this you know, movie is, is so sad. As, as a little girl, and mm-hmm. really loving it, but like I said, not watching it repeatedly because of how sad it made me feel overall. Um, I know, really, like, weird, right? Um, watching it as an adult, it was nice because I hadn't at all seen it or thought about it or even recalled a lot about it other than the, the, the song, the, the last unicorn song, um, the titular song, if you will. That's right, yes. Um from the movie. I hadn't really remembered a whole lot from it. Um, so watching it again, I, it was nice to see and think like, oh yeah, I remember the butterfly guy. Oh yeah, I remember... I even then remembered Mommy from Chur- for Chorna or, and all that stuff. So that was kind of cool. Um, and it's such a quick... I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed revisiting a movie that I had enjoyed as a little girl. I think I would have been really confused had you come on here and you're like... I cried. I, mean, <laughs> I would not know how to deal with that, so I'm glad it wasn't. As I sad didn't, as you but remember. as a kid, I did. I did, yeah. and I don't remember why. Well, I mean, things affect kids differently than yeah. when they're adults. I may have cried at Howard the Duck. I don't know. <laughs> you probably did. It's a, good, it's a good chance. I know you cried at um, RoboCop. I know you did. All right. So, um, what did you think? I, I did not enjoy this movie. Not one bit? At all. No, I now, didn't. Now, you didn't watch it with your daughters. Do you think your daughters would have enjoyed it? Probably. Okay. Yeah, probably. It was just, apparently my children have schedules. Scheduling <laughs> conflicts where we couldn't watch it together. Um, like I said, I like I really got a kick out of the cat. I really got a kick out of the skeleton. Mm-hmm. I just, I wanted more of that. Like, this movie seemed to me like a movie where... There's a traveling band of heroes, right. and their band grows, mm-hmm. and they should get into interesting situations. But none of that, like, first two-thirds of the movie was interesting to me. Like, the whole Robin Hood part, the whole... Yeah, there's parts wandering where it can go by more a places. Farmer, like, it, it just... Until they got... I would say that if people are at all curious, you can watch... Start when she's turned into a human and just watch it to the end. It's only like 20 minutes, but I think that's the 20 best minutes of the movie. It's really the most action. And you're not missing anything. Like Mm. that, that harpy never comes back. Like I was waiting for that evil creature to come back and like at the end, like save them from the bull. Like, oh, wow, look at this. An old character has returned. And the cat would jump into their arms as they laughed or something. But (laughs) no, none of that stuff happened. Well, it's it's clearly not a complicated tale. It's not layered at all or, or like, rich with, with, like you said, even folklore of, like, oh, so there's a bull that used to chase. But uh, But I I feel like they could have done that. It's not just because it's a G-rated movie. It's not Mm -hmm. just because it's a cartoon. They Mm -hmm. could have done this better. Mm-hmm. And they didn't. And they didn't. Well, again, I think that's even to modern standards. I think at the time, they did. That it was. It was. I may take issue with that in my recommendations. Oh, fair enough. All right. Well, then let's so let's roll will, right into those. I will give you a recommendation now. This movie mm-hmm. from the exact same year. Oh. Another animated movie. All right. That looks so much better, and the story. Is so much better. It's the secret of Nim. Oh, do you remember that with the yeah. mice? Where the one mouse is in the field and yeah. has to like get her family out before like the field gets plowed, and she like teams up and goes to look for help with these rats that had been like scientifically experimented on, so they're super smart. And it's a dark movie. Like I knew that I liked it, and right. I watched trailers and stuff to make sure I wanted. Like it looks. So much better than the last oh. unicorn, and yeah, I, I, it's just a much better movie. And it's from the same year, which then made me a little more upset with the last unicorn, I think, than I originally was. Oh, so I would recommend the Secret of Nim if you're All looking right. for a cartoon. That's a good one. That's a good one. What about you? I recommended Labyrinth because, but when we watched Labyrinth, I recommended the Last Unicorn. I think Did they you? sort of go hand I don't in remember hand. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah. I would also recommend The Little Mermaid, which is not far off from the story and a lot more entertaining and, and I think a, more of a box office smash. <laughs> You're going to go out on a limb there and say a <laughs> Disney film from the early 90s made money? <laughs> <laughs> um, so again, I don't know. You can listen to Jamie. You can listen to me. Whatever. I don't care. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't care. Just don't send me a copy of The Last Unicorn. Fair Hunter enough. Ray. Fair enough. So next week, it's Michael Ironside's birthday. Are you uh, familiar with uh, Michael Ironside at all? Mm, he, Mr. Ironside. Mr. <laughs> Good old <laughs> Mr. Ironside. Good old side of iron. <laughs> he always plays bad guys. Like, he played the bad guy in Total Recall. That's probably where he's best known. Mm-hmm. But he played a bad guy in a little movie mm-hmm. by David Cronenberg called Scanners. Ha. And... A man's head explodes on screen. So just get ready for that. I mean, you're taking us from the enchanted forest to exploding yeah. heads. Yeah, I think it's going to be a little different. I'm excited. Just a little different. It's about people who can read other people's minds and other stuff. I don't know. Whatever. It's David Cronenberg. Like, it's probably going to be gross and weird body horror and disgusting stuff like that. So that should be a lot of fun. <laughs> For you, I know. What a Valentine delight. <laughs> is it Valentine's oh, Day? Oh, is it Valentine? How come I didn't... Is it oh, around man. Valentine's Day? Yeah, I think it's on the 12th. Uh, I think our episode comes <laughs> on the 12th, and I picked a movie where a guy's head explodes. <laughs> where there were You're so clearly the romantic in this. Oh, my God. <laughs> I Yeah, um... If you could let me know when major holidays are coming up soon, <laughs> oh, yeah. maybe I could do a little bit of research. That's fine. But anyway, it's on tape. This is tape, right? Like we're yeah, recording yeah, on we tape. Yeah, we are on tape. And yeah. you can't delete yeah. tape. That's no, the thing. No. So two weeks from today, we will be talking about <laughs> Scanners, the perfect romantic movie. <laughs> Snuggle up with someone you love by the fire with some glasses of wine and listen to us talk about scanners. We promise it will be very classy. I guess we should go. Let's We're wrap done. it. Yeah, it's ended. We are All right, everybody. It. See you in two weeks. See you then. Ciao. I've had time to write a book about the way you act and look I haven't got a paragraph Words are always getting in my way Anyway, I love you That's all I have to tell you That's all I've got to Oh, oh, purr, purr, do that Yes, that'd be nice